Welcome, everyone, to Buzzer Beaters, Episode 7. I'm Eddie Aparicio, and this is my co-host, Anthony Tuan Corral. And if this is your first time listening to Buzzer Beaters, Buzzer Beaters is a podcast that is dedicated to basketball with an emphasis on the NBA. Buzzer Beaters is a property of gremlinsmedia.com. You can find us on gremlinsmedia.com, Rumble, YouTube, under their profile, Gremlins Media, as well as your traditional podcast outlets such as Spotify, Google, Apple, and Pandora. You can also find us on Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter. If this is your first time listening to us, the format of the show is that both Anthony or Tuan and I pick two topics each, and then we host each other's topics. And the intent is for us to cover about an hour's worth of material for the show, spending about 15 minutes per topic each. Sometimes we might go a little bit over, Sometimes we might go a little under, but that's the intent. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. So for the topics that I chose for this week, we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs, just like we do every week until the finals happens and it's over. We're going to continue to talk about the NBA playoffs throughout the whole next few weeks until it's over. Then my next topic is if you had listened to our episode three podcast, we talked about like if we were going to go ahead and pick a team you know, right now, based on the players today, that would have, you know, a, a success for the next four to five years, what would that team look like? Well, I want to kind of put a little wrinkle to that and actually kind of open it up to the all-time starting five. Who would be our all-time starting five that we would pick on our team? So we're going to go ahead and talk about who we picked and why we picked them. And there's probably going to be some omissions, but we're going to talk about why some of those people were omitted from our top five. So that's those are my two topics. Tuan, what are your two topics that you want to talk about? So uh, my two topics is um, uh, around kind of following the theme of Eddie's top five. I wanted to talk about the five most underrated players. But within there, uh, within that topic, I wanted to kind of weave in, um, you know, kind of the qualities of greatness, because uh, I think it, it, it it's embedded with it's embedded with underrated players. You know, what, what, what made them underrated? What were they really good at? Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And so um, get into that a little bit. And then my last topic is uh, kind of, as I've been watching the playoffs, something that I've kind of noticed, and I think we notice it every year in the playoffs is, and that is large market teams and the advantages that they have over small market teams. But I don't necessarily want to get all the way into kind of the conspiracy theory aspect of it, although we can. We can, yeah. and it'll probably head there. But I do kind of want to discuss the parameters of what, what makes a large market team. Now, I know most people are going to go, well, the number of viewers. Uh, I've got arguments that say otherwise, um, okay. you know, or also what market they're in, right? Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that and, you know, the benefits of being in a large market team in regards to gaining new players, uh, whistles, uh, the NBA, you know, it's a business. So how does that kind of weave its way in. So those are my two topics for this week. Right on, Twan. Sounds like a good show, man. So yeah. let's go ahead and get into it, man. So let's go through through the first topic that I chose. Of course, it's always going to be the NBA playoffs. Yep. So let's talk let's go to the East like we always do first. And yep. but rather than going to the Boston Celtics first, let's go to the game that actually is in progress right now where the Knicks and Pacers are currently tied at 2-2, but it looks like the Knicks are going to pull this one out. Uh, they're up by 20 right now in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about that game. I don't know if you had a chance to to kind of look at what's going on, but I can tell you that the Nova Knicks, the three Villanova <laughs> guys, right? Uh, Jalen Brunson, you know, Dante DiVincenzo, and Josh Hart, those three guys are playing well together. And it looks like they played together for years, right? Because they have. They yeah. did it in college, right? Yeah. So those guys are just playing out of their butts right now, and especially Jalen Brunson. You know, Jalen Brunson – hurt his foot uh, in the last game. And he, you could tell that he was hindered by that. You know, he wasn't playing with the same explosive explosiveness. He wasn't able to score at the same clip that he had been showing in the previous games. But today, man, he came back with a vengeance. Yep. He came back to show that he is the old Jalen Brunson and says, don't count me out. Even if I have this foot injury, I mean, these guys are That's just me. playing like, like Navy SEALs, as as uh, Rick Carlisle described the team. They're a bunch of Navy SEALs playing in the NBA. They're just hard-nosed, hard-pressed guys. And their coach, Tom Thibodeau, I mean, he is that hard-nosed kind of coach, and he's just 
pretty much getting all these guys to play really hard like like he would want to play. So uh, the, 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 the Nova Knicks are the guys who are carrying them, in my opinion, right now. Uh, and the Pacers, you know, I, I, unfortunately, you know, I, if, if their pace gets slowed down or they're having trouble shooting, they're the deeper team. Um, and for whatever reason, I, I think they need to play – you know, uh, uh, O'Connell more, uh, yes, TJ McConnell, TJ McConnell needs to play way more, man, because that guy's a matchup problem. And he, I think he he's is. a guy who can create problems for Jalen Brunson, but yet Rick Carlisle doesn't play McConnell that much. So I don't know what's going on there, but, um, but imagine if they had Ben Matherin, man, imagine if they had Ben Matherin, the, the Pacers. I mean, that yeah. guy is a really good, you know, a sixth, seventh man. And he's a scoring machine. If they had that guy, man, Run TMMP would be the name, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you, what are your thoughts, man, on, on that uh, on that series? It's going to go three uh, two with the Knicks taking the lead here, and it's going back to Indiana in Game Six. So, you know, my, my thoughts were, you know, Game One. I thought I thought it could have went either way. Um, I thought the whistle went that one whistle went New York's in New York's way, and I, I thought they got the game. Game Two was a blowout. The Knicks blew them out, and so going back to Indiana, I'm like, you know, I don't know if Indiana's got anything kind of left. You know, and surprisingly, game three was tight. Uh, Indiana ended up pulling that one out. And then game four, I saw the Knicks look really tired. Like They really did. Really I agree really with tired. you. They look yeah. tired. They look like spent. I agree. And, and the thing is, is that they are playing a lot of minutes. The They're, they're, they're starters for sure. Well, Josh Hart um, is like, I mean, like give me a whole thing about him taking a yeah. one-minute rest, you know, because yeah. the, dude, the dude doesn't come off the court. It's and, amazing. And, yeah, no, it's incredible. And so I didn't know what to make of it, you know, and then I watched the Knicks today. I thought maybe, hey, maybe the Pacers can steal one today. You know, uh, OG Ananobi's out. Uh, they got, you know, uh, Jerry Brunson still, yeah. you know, trying to come together. And so I thought maybe they could steal one. But, no, the Knicks found their energy. They, like you said, the Nova Knicks, and they, they're they playing tough. And they, they, they kept that home. So now I don't know. This series and the Nuggets and Wolves series, I can't quite figure out. It seems to go like one direction, and then it swings in the other direction. It seems to be extremes. And so at yeah. this point, I don't know what's up, but I would imagine that the Pacers are going to win at home, and then we're going to go to Game 7. And most likely the Knicks will win Game 7 at the house. But but I think, yeah, that's that's kind of the way I'm seeing it right now. Right, right. And the thing is, you know, for our little contest, if it goes to yeah. seven and the Knicks win, I win that one, right? I get two yeah. points on that. And at that point, I think I have it, man. But uh, anyway, we'll go ahead and see. But, but but the thing is, you know, have not having OG and Anobi definitely is hurting the Knicks. And I think that's probably what happened in the last game is what you saw. Some of that, you know, the 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 the... the the, the ramifications of him not being there. And I think they had to adjust without him. And I think you now this game, you know, they showed that they can play without him. I mean, they played most, a, a majority of the season without, you know, Ananobi. But then when he, when he was playing in the playoffs, I mean, he was playing lights out, defense, scoring. I mean, he was a difference maker. And when that guy is gone, you know, it, it creates an adjustment period for the team. And I think that's probably what we saw in game four, which is why we saw the Knicks lose, you yeah. know, uh, they were going through that adjustment period. And then of course, you know, they also lost Mitchell Robinson, you know, he, he had season end, ending surgery, so he's out now. So they have two big key cogs that are no longer on. They're, they're nowhere to be seen for the team for the rest of the remainder of the, of the NBA playoffs and Mitchell Robinson. And of course, uh, 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 Julius Randle. Julius Randle is, you know, hasn't been on the team even from the beginning of the playoffs. But just imagine if they had their full squad. I mean, that team is scary, man. And I wanted to be real frank with you, Tuan. I'm pulling for that team, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and the, the reason, you know, I got I to gotta find a team when my when one of my Warriors are not playing that I like. And because yeah. Dante DiVincenzo played for the Warriors most recently, and they also have Alec Burks. Alec Burks, Burks, there's a couple right? of them, yeah. Alec Burks played for the Warriors. Wow. You know, I, I got to pull for some guys that play for the Warriors. So the Knicks are the guys that I'm kind of pulling for right now, man. Yeah, so you know, um, the one thing I did want to note, you know, um, Toppin. Um, Obi Toppin. Yeah, Obi yep. Toppin. I don't like his game, man. Uh, you don't, huh? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, he, he is way too offensive minded. He leaks out too fast. You know, he's he's doing like between the leg dunks, which you know everyone likes. I'm not trying to be old man at the cloud. Um, you know, yelling at the <laughs> at the lawn or yelling at the yeah, cloud. Yeah, or yeah, get off my lawn! I'm like, I'm like, dude, buckle down. You know, play yeah, some yeah, D. Yeah. Like, you know, we were talking about McConnell. Like, I think, I mean, obviously they're different sizes, but there's a player you could sit, in my opinion, and play McConnell more. You I know? think McConnell's a difference maker, and I'm surprised yeah. Carlisle's not playing him. And, you know, he needs to play him Carlisle's, more. Yeah, and given Carlisle's mentality, you would think, 
McConnell's like his type of guy. I mean, he's yeah. you know kind of a yeah. defensive guy. So I don't I don't know what's going on there. But I, just I don't know. Him. Maybe maybe he's fearful that you know they're going to take advantage of the small you know per, you know because he, he's small in stature, but he's stocky. He's like Brunson. You yeah. know, he's stocky and strong. And I don't know, man. Any and he, and, and he, he gets under skin. Brunson, he pisses Brunson he off. And, yeah, well, they, they're good friends, by the way. They know each other very well, and yeah, um, and so they're good friends, and, and and they support each other and so forth. But yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I'm surprised. Carlisle needs to make an adjustment, just yeah. like Thibodeau made an adjustment tonight, where he started Miles McBride or Deuce McBride tonight yeah. to give him more outside shooting, and it, it made a difference. I mean, they're up by 20 points, yeah, and, and Miles yeah, McBride came out to play, man. So I think Carl Carlisle needs to to change the the the, the, the starting lineup up, and I think they need to put McConnell in the starting. Lineup just yeah, to, just and to things see are getting chippy, you know. There's been a couple yeah. of technical fouls in this game, they're kind of going at it a little bit. DiVincenzo yeah. and Turner were bumping heads, so yep. it's getting yep. good. Yeah, hopefully, it the is can win the next game and we get you know another another game seven. Seven. game seven. Yeah. The two best yeah. words in the NBA on yep. game, game seven, seven right? Game seven. So, I think it's going to go seven, man. So, uh, I think the Pacers are going to pull out at home next game, and then we're going to see game seven in New York, man. Yeah. All right, bro. So, let's go uh, to the Boston Celtics and the Cavs. Uh, the, the Boston Celtics won last night. You know, the Cavs were at a severe disadvantage without Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could pretty much seal their fate at that point that they had no shot. But, you know, the Cavs came to play, man. And you, you know, that typically happens. You know, anytime like a star player isn't playing, it t- you, you typically see that. The, the other guys rally around that. And then the other team kind of has a letdown because they're thinking, oh, we just show up, man. It happens all the time. It's human nature. And the, if anything that the Boston Celtics haven't showed us is that they they should, they have a tendency to kind of just yeah, rest on their laurels the and yeah. depend on their freaking you know talent, which they have in abundance. But you know, we saw in game two what happened, right? They 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 yeah. lost at home by twenty four points. I mean. Yep. The, how, how, does a contending team for a championship lose by 24 points at home? I mean, well, that's unheard of, right? Uh, you yeah, I mean, historically, the blowouts have happened. I can't – I, I got to look back and see whether any of those – 24 points, home. man. I, th- oh, I can see yeah. a loss. But yeah. 24 points at home? Yeah. Come on, that's, man. That's, that's so bad. so that's that's a little – you know, that, that's a little disturbing and concerning about, you know, the Celtics being, you know, the overall top favorite to win it. Yeah. And we both chose them to win it, and rightfully so, because of their talent and how deep they are. But without Christoph Porzingis, they're a little vulnerable right now. And But but the thing is, is that if Jalen if, – if, not Jalen Brunson. If Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown play like they have been playing, where they're way more assertive, going to the key, they're not relying on their outside shot right now. They're actually driving to the key and just – you know, pushing the, the pushing the, the other team to defend them. That's when Jason Tatum's at his best, and I think he's figured something out, man. I think I think you know you can see that he's no longer relying on, on that outside shot. And, and a lot of people kind of used to comment on just his game being he's uber talented, but he would be so 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 dependent on the outside shot, kind of like the same tendency you saw with Joel Embiid being so big and so versatile down low that he would just kind of resort to being an outside shooter and Shaq would be all over him. Get down low because you're just a matchup nightmare. And yet, you know, we see him shoot from the outside. Same thing with Tatum. Tatum is a matchup nightmare no matter who is guarding him because of his length, you know, and smaller guys can't guard him because of his length. And taller guys can't guard him because he's too fast and you can just get right past him. So I think he figures something out. Jalen Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum have figured something out, and I think it's going to be over by next game, man, especially if Donovan Mitchell's not playing. Is Jared Allen out for the series? He's been uh, questionable. Every, he's not. He's not out. He hasn't been declared out for the series, but he's, you know, has his rib contusion. Um, we don't know how serious his rib contusion is. It might be some kind of a strained, you know, yeah. ligament or something or yeah. it's cartilage. We don't know, but. You know, I've had a rib injury before, and they are painful. It kind of messes with your movement a little bit and your breathing. But hey, man, cortisone shot away, man, it takes that pain away, man. So I don't know, man. They they need they need him big time. I think if he played, it would be a lot closer series. But in my opinion, it's a wrap, man. I think it's going to be gone. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's over wrap. next it's game, man. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, if it's not this next game, it'll be the one right after. But yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a four-one gentleman sweep. Yep, I agree. And the thing is, hey, man, Drew Holiday, man, he is a difference I, yeah. maker, man. Milwaukee that made dude, a huge mistake. I'm that you. dude, I agree, man. And and, yeah. and I, I always loved him, man. I thought he would be a great fit for the Warriors, but he's too high priced for him. But, you know, that guy, I mean, he, he showed up last game. He just does everything well. No, he's he a does. Very he's a gamer. 
He's a he's gamer. A, he is, man. And he looks like, he looks like he's hardly breaking his sweat, too. You ever, I mean, you never see the guy play. He's like, eh, he's just kind of going through. Yeah. It's, like, it's a trip, man. But yeah, he's like 10 like miles a, an hour. He's like, poof. Yeah, man. He's, he, yeah. You, you hardly see the guy sweating out there, man. He's just, yeah. he's, he's an awesome player. He's a difference maker. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still all in on the Celtics just because of their talent. And hopefully they figure something out with, you know, the scare that they had in game two that they need to kind of step up and not take anybody for granted. I mean, I'm surprised we have to say that for a team like that, but yeah. we have to, right? We just have to. So uh, any other parting thoughts before we go into the, no, to the just, just it, it, uh, if and when the Knicks meet up with the Celtics, those, those injuries, Ananobi, uh, Mitchell Robinson, those injuries are going to, they're going to make a huge difference in that series. And absolutely. Porzingis is, will probably be back, but then even with those guys out, Porzingis doesn't necessarily have to be back. For that right. I think he right. can he can take some extra time. So yeah, yeah. I don't it, I don't yeah, see they, Boston I don't see Boston not getting to the finals. Yeah, I mean the only I, I, Knicks will be a threat for him, especially you know if they if the Knicks play like they're playing right now, um, you know. But there's matchup nightmares n- matchup nightmares all over the, the court with that yeah. series, you yeah. know. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, uh, you know, next week when this happens. So and Boston right. plays a little better D than Indiana does. So there's that. Yeah, there's that. yeah. I mean, Indiana hardly plays D, man, but they just yeah, run them down yeah. and run Pretty TMP, baby. Little... Yeah. <laughs> run TMP. Run all right, man. Let's let's go to the West, man. So let's all start right. off with the. Uh, the, the game that just happened last night where uh, the Cavs, that's what you mean, the, the OKC and the Mavs, OKC Thunder and the Mavs, uh, uh, tie, you know, the series got tied up last night. OKC went into Dallas and beat them. So now yeah. the, the series is back uh, two to two. So OKC now got home court advantage right back. Um, you know, what I've seen, you know, so far, especially the last two games, is that Luka Doncic, man, is getting beaten up, man. You got that freaking bulldozer, uh, Lou Dort. He's a linebacker, man. He's just yep. creating havoc. And you know what's funny is that when we when we first thought you know the series was gonna, ha- I thought um, uh, Shea Gildas Alexander would be the guy guarding um, uh, uh, Luka Doncic because of his length. But man, I forgot about like Lou Dort. He's like their junkyard dog. I mean, that guy is just he's playing out of his butt, and he has and his shot has gotten way better. So he's yeah. he, he's he's definitely a, a true three and D type guy, but he's definitely his his uh, tenacity and his and his physicality I think is creating some problems for Luca. And you can see him, he's he's bruised up, man. He's hurt. You know, he's got multiple well, You know, it's so out. hard, but it's so hard to tell with Luca when he's hurt cuz he goes down for everything. Like, you know, like a couple <laughs> games ago, like, you know, my knee, I can't get up and then you know, he's out there taking it to the hole. He's got that soccer skill, you know, the I'm yeah, hurt, I'm hurt, I'm down, all of a sudden it pops back up. It's you know? <laughs> very so, true. Man. So, yeah, very don't, Jim, true. don't Jim Brown us, man. We know what you're yeah. doing. So I, I always don't buy it. You know, when I look at Luke, I'm like, I'm trying to look and see, is he really hurt? Or is he just yeah. kind of, you know, milking it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they made a comment about that at the last game. Like, you know, we thought that this guy was on the floor, for, you know, not yeah, going to exactly. come back. And then he's shooting a three and he makes it, right? It's like, exactly. he's totally duping us, man. Yeah, uh, totally, man. And he's a soccer uh, fiend, right? I mean, yep. you know, yep. uh, yeah. So the uh, Serbians are they're they're into their soccer, man, and and that's, yep. that's they got their acting skills down. Yep, for sure, man, for sure. But I got to tell you, man, the guy who's really impressed me on the Maverick side, um, you know, of course, Kyrie Irving has been playing really, really well yeah, from to a me, that's who's standpoint, me and he's distributing a lot. No, PJ Washington, man. Yeah, PJ yeah. Washington has been their leading scorer. You know, uh, up to a certain point, yeah. You know, Luca takes over at some point, but he's a you know, PJ Washington is their leading store scorer up to a certain point. But he, his timely threes, his defense, you know, breaking out on on breaks, you know, he's been definitely a, a, a godsend for that team, a difference maker galore. And of course, yeah. uh, Daniel Gafford, you know, he's actually you know held his own against Chet Holmgren. Uh, you know, Daniel Gafford is also a matchup problem. I mean, both those guys. Or a matchup problem for the for the for the Oklahoma Oklahoma City Thunder, you know, from a defensive standpoint, because they're bigger and more athletic in general. Because they only have, you know, Oklahoma City Thunder only really have one of those guys in Chet Holmgren, and you know, he's definitely a difference maker. But the guy on the on the OKC Thunder who just looks unstoppable, man, is Shea Gildas Alexander. Yeah. Man, so that smooth, guy is, he is smooth, man, and everything he throws up seems to go in, man. It's like no matter what he wants to do, it, it, it's going in, man. He just does kind of whatever he wants to. And he's so herky jerky, right? And it's like, how do you stop this guy? They don't have anybody. Yeah, but even even his herky, I mean, he kind of reminds me of Michael Cooper, where it's like it's herky jerky, but it's smooth, you know? Like he's just always kind of just like an S, right? Not like not like V's or or X's. He's kind of like an S. He's, he, he's a bigger version of Jalen Brunson and how Jalen yeah. Brunson moves. Yeah, you know, Jalen Brunson moves similarly, 
but I would say that you know but Shea Jay has more physical. I would say that Gil is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, but, yeah. But, she, but Shea's got this like behind the back kind of, you know, he's dribbling behind the back, step back shot, and it's unstoppable, man, because he's so herky jerky, man. Yeah. And he just, he's another guy that just looks like he's hardly sweating out there, man. I mean, that headband yeah. that he wears is soaking up all the sweat, man, because he just, he never sweats out there. That guy's just yeah. so smooth. Very, very, I mean, he's an you extremely know, talented guy. And I can see why a lot of people felt that he got ripped off from winning the MVP this year. Because, you know, Nikola Jokic has had, you know, this is his third one. And like, you know, a lot of these voters say they get kind of like, you know, uh, fatigue from a certain player always being there. And, you know, a lot of people thought maybe this would be the year that, you know, Shea would win it. And, you know, definitely he was second in the running, you know, uh, behind, uh, you know, he was in front of Luka Doncic. Um, but, yeah, but uh, uh, Jokic, you know, deservedly, I mean, he's he's definitely the, 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 the league's best player. He deserved it. But Shea is right on his butt, man. Yeah. Shea is a damn good player, man. Yep, so. and Shea's one of those guys that, uh, you know, got uh, got traded away because they were creating the big whatever, the yep. big Kawhi, the big Paul George, the big – and that's – I don't think the Clippers are winning a thing, and Shea's going to be around for a while, so – yeah, yeah. So what do you see happening, man? What do you see happening next game? I mean, they're they're going back to OKC in game five. What do this, you, is, this is this is a tight one to call. I think I had the Mavs coming out of here. Uh, yeah, you did. You did. To you did. OKC. I don't you remember need, you, you need that one badly, bro. You need the Mavs <laughs> to win. Bro. Still, this, the Wolves ain't one. dead yet, brother. The Wolves ain't dead <laughs> yet. Yeah, but, yeah, but, Dude, yeah, I got a two, I got a two point lead on you, man. It's twelve to ten, and you need to It's all right. It's all right. If 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 if. If the Indiana manages to beat the Knicks, yes, you get you're in a hole. You get two points there. Then we're tied. You're in a hole. You're in a hole. But uh, yeah, we'd be tied. You know, I I think Oklahoma City is looking like they're going to be the ones that. uh, No, sorry. I think Dallas are the good. You know, I I I think Dallas is going to pull it off too. But the only thing is, is you know, we don't know if Luke is really duping us or if he really is hurt and he's just kind of showing that he's not not that hurt because you know he's he was asked that question post game last night. You know, how you doing? And he's like, I'm fine. I don't know about that, man. He's you can see, man. He's he's getting he's getting roughed up a little bit, and that's the definitely OKC strategy in trying to limit that guy's effectiveness. And, you know, have somebody else beat them, you know, like a Kyrie or a P.J. Washington. I think it's probably why you're seeing those guys, you know, emerge because of how they are defending Luka. They're fen- they're, they're defending him with physicality, and it's it's limiting him. He's not as effective as he has been, but luckily they have a P.J. Washington to help him out, you know. Yeah. But I think their experience is going to uh, overcome the youth movement. That's OKC. But, man, OKC is a very deep team, man. I'm very impressed with how young that team is and how poised they are as a team. And it's cool to see that when, when they interview after post game, they're all together, man. I really like that about that team, yeah. man. They, they, like they, they all stick together, man. And they, 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 no one wants to stand out over the other kind of reminds me of the old school warriors, man, how they were the same exact way, man. I think the OKC reminds me of the warriors a lot yeah. man. just yeah. when they first emerged. So, yeah. Uh, any, I, think, any... I, I think OKC is a year or two to go. To bake up to, to win to win it, you mean? Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. I think they're a year or two away from, you know, threatening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, but, so, so you see the Mavs winning this one in in six or seven? No, I think this one's going seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think this one's going to go. I, yeah, seven. I, I, I would say the Mavs go in seven as well. That's my call too. Um, you know, and of course, you all know that I picked yeah, the Warriors yeah. here, but they're nowhere to be seen. But anyway, um, all right, man. Any, any last uh, parting thoughts? Well, you before we go to the next one. Your team's not playing. Uh, yeah, no, you, you, you get two. You get two points if you win this one, especially if it goes uh, seven. So you would win two points. Right. You'd be a two head, points ahead of me, man. But then we got this one where we're different too, right? So the we got rise the rise of the dead. The, the rise of the dead. What oh, happened, dude, man? The Phoenix is rising. They were left yes. dead, man. I mean, they Jesus. Were. You know, when we were when we were having this podcast, you know, they were actually playing about to play game three and they were down two zero. And we're like, man, this team, you were like, gentlemen sweep. I don't know, man. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. like, I don't know, man. I think this is going to go seven. You can't underestimate the heart well, of the Jamal team. Murray decided to wake up. He did, man. But, you yeah. know, and, 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 you know, they just, they, they, they changed their lineup around a little bit. They have Christian Brown playing a little bit more right now. You know, Peyton Watson hasn't played at all, but Christian Brown has played uh, very well for him. You know, uh, Aaron Gordon has played yes. really well as, as I gotta well. Give, I got to give kudos to Aaron Gordon because, you know, in, in, in over at Orlando, he was the star, you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he was the guy, and he's really – you know, I like 
I like to see when a when a team when players begin to play a role within that yeah. team, especially yeah. when a team a player has to sacrifice. I'm sure that Gordon thinks he can do more or is more of a star than what he is in the uh, Nuggets scheme, but he's he's playing a good role. I, I I like what he's doing. I think it speaks well of him, and and he's definitely impact. I don't know if you saw. You know, they asked Ant Man over there, uh, "What do you think about Gordon?" He's like, "Man, I don't want to talk about Gordon." <laughs> He's like walking away. He's like, "I don't want nothing to do with that guy. That guy's pissing me off." <laughs> Well, he's a very physical player, and we got to support our fellow WCAL uh, uh, brethren, That's man. Right? right? Yeah. He went to many, right? man. You know, yeah. we, we and for those of the audience, you know, uh, us us guys, uh, Tuan and I were both uh, city kids from San Francisco. I went to San Ignatius, and then Sacred Tuan Heart. went to Sacred Heart, and we yeah. played against Mitty, You know, you know, in, in our in all of our leagues, and we didn't play at the time that you know Aaron Corden played, of course. No. You know, we're, not that we're young. way too old, man. <laughs> we're not that young, right? But you know, we got to support our, our WCAL uh, brethren, man. So Aaron Gordon has been playing very well but uh, you know what what happened man with respect to the tenacity that we saw you know from the first two games from the wolves you know maybe it might be the presence of rudy gobert because you pointed that out you know yeah, no, gobert, they, they, they played yeah. I, I i think i think yeah i think gobert is one thing but i do think i got to give a lot of credit to jamal murray i think he's he's created a lot of problems for for minnesota he's he's kind of opened up things for uh, Jokic. Um, so I I, I, I I say it's more Murray than it is Gobert. Right. But, but I do think that at this point, Minnesota should look about maybe having Gobert come off the bench or mm. have him, you know, something along those lines and kind of do oh, that. Man, that's, that's a, that, that could disrupt the chemistry, man, because Gobert would be like totally moping. I don't know, man. That's the I problem mean, with Gobert. And, yeah. you know, so we were just talking about Aaron Gordon, right? And, you yeah. know, and we can go back, you know, um, I think if Gobert wants to win a championship, he'd be open to an idea where he, you know, it'd be, it'd make him, it'd make the team a better opportunity to win. And yeah. I think that, you know, yeah, I don't know, man. I, but, but I agree with you. I he's think a he's defensive a player of the year, man. He's four time yeah. defensive player of the year. I don't know if he could do that. I don't I don't know if uh 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 Finch, Chris Finch can make that call, man. I don't I don't know. Maybe he maybe he limits his playing time. Maybe that's it. You know, maybe start him, but maybe not play him as many minutes. Maybe have Nas Reed kind of go up against yeah, Jokic. That's, that's the Nas Reed was causing play. a problem for Jokic. That's the man, guy that needs you know? to play more. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you know, of course, you know, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, you know, I don't know if you heard, but his mom had just passed away. And that's probably why, you know, he wasn't himself last game. He didn't play as well. So, you know, rest in, uh, rest in peace, uh, Mrs. Towns. Um, you know, that's a heavy heart. You know, we both lost our, our, our moms recently to Tuan and I. So we definitely can, uh, uh, you know, identify and relate to that with what Carl is, is dealing with. So, um, but, you know, it, it, it's it's an escape for him too. Basketball is an escape. Anything that you do can be escape from the sorrow that you have from a, a loved one's death. So Carl Anthony Towns, I think, you know, he'll, hopefully will come back you know, from this and be able to play at the level that he did the first two games. Could This could be his escape, and he has something to play for. He'd be playing for his mom, just like, you know, the, the Warriors did for Mila uh, De- Mailovic. Remember uh, uh, yep. De- Deki, you know, Mailovic? Yeah. You know, when he when he passed away, the Warriors kind of just kind of rallied around that, right? So, you know, hopefully he can find that strength to, to, to play for his mom because it, I, we all we understand what he's going through. But um, so, but what do you see happening, man? What do you, what do you see happening with the Nuggets and the Wolves, man? What well, do you, what do you, what do you like see you mentioned, you know, the heart of a champion uh, is, is rising. The, the nut see like in these types of situations, you know, it's a lot harder for the Wolves to lose two at home than it is for the Nuggets to lose two at home. Right. Right. Like people will think that's the same, same, but it's not because the Nuggets have the experience. The Nuggets know, what it takes to get to the finals and win the finals. So I think I, I I honestly, I hate to admit it. I mean, I got the wolves winning, I believe in seven. Uh, I think the nuggets are going to win this in seven. And, and, and and I think tomorrow, uh, actually the, is it, they're playing right now, right? No, tomorrow's game. They're playing, they're playing, they're playing playing right now. Oh, they're playing right now. So I think today's game is going to tell a lot. Absolutely. Because if it's a blowout, if the nuggets win by a blowout, this, this could be done. You know, we and, shall and, see, man. And, I mean, and, then, and, then, and then you're yeah. going to get all the Ant Man needs some help. You know, what are we going to do? You know, yeah. that yeah, type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're yeah, going to get yeah, all yeah. that type of thing coming down the pike. But, but yeah, I think right. the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets might pull this off in seven. I I would not have said that because I just thought Minnesota looked 
like a they look like just dogs, world man. beaters, man. I mean, how they played the first two games, crap, man. I mean, yeah. we, everybody saw it. And what happened is that uh, 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 Coach Malone for the Nuggets, he definitely used that as a way to kind of get his team fired up. He played all what the pundits were saying about, you know, the Nuggets being dead, you know, yeah. and that, that he used that as inspiration for his team. And kudos to him, man. He knew what would work for his team. And they came out, you know, punching. So, I, I, I see it going seven two, if maybe even six. Man, the Nuggets seem to they just woke up from yeah. their stupor, and I think that they're gonna go but against. You know, I will give credit to Anthony Edwards. That dude's not his game still continues. He still continues to be aggressive. He still continues to be. You know, I, I think he's a star in the making. And you know, a couple episodes Absolutely. ago, we we talked about the new face of the NBA, and I think he's still a prime candidate for that. Yep, I agree, man. I agree. This is this has definitely been a showcase of his talents. You know, I would probably say if we were to pick an MVP in the entire playoffs, he would be the guy right now for the entire playoffs. He hard just showed up that much. Yeah, yeah. So, it'd be hard to argue against that. I agree. Yep, yep. All right, man. So let's go ahead. Uh, we finished that segment. Let's go on to the second topic that I wanted to talk about. So right. as I, we talked about, you know, in, in the opening that we had a segment in episode three of Buzzer Beaters where we talked about, you know, picking a team now, you know, that we would think that would carry on for the next five years and be contenders. And, now, you know, it's a total fantasy thing, right? We're just kind of just making this, th- you know, trying to come up yep. with a team that we thought would be really dynamic for the next five years. Well, I wanted to kind of change it up. And I wanted to go ahead and focus on the all-time, you know, uh, rosters that we want to have, an all-time starting five, you know, from all the players of the NBA that have played and just – who would that be? You know, kind of like the Mount Rushmore, if you will, even though Mount Rushmore is only four presidents. We're talking about basketball Mount Rushmore, so there's five, right? So so if we were to go ahead and pick the all-time starting five, I'm going to go ahead and ask you the question first. All right. Who would you pick as your all-time starting point guard? Magic Johnson. I agree. I have that as well. Magic Johnson is also my point guard Best passer of all time, widely considered the best passer of all, of all time, revolutionized the point guard position because of his size at 6'10", and we have never seen anything like the way he passes. Not even today. I think the closest we could see is probably LeBron, but he's not even close. I mean, that's how much better Magic Johnson was from a passing standpoint than Le- LeBron James. So I don't think we have anybody else close to him other than Now, now I do want to, as, as we continue down the list, I'll, I'll be glad to, but I do want to at least – let everyone know my thought process when I'm doing something like this. Uh, my, my thought process is I'm always looking at, at building a team. Yes. Right? So that doesn't necessarily mean I'm picking a, a guy that everyone would agree with, but I'm picking a team and strengths and weaknesses and trying to put that all together. So I just want to go through that mm-hmm. as we go down the line. I mean, our list may be the same. I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. We haven't, hey, we, hey, for the audience, we haven't even told each other who we're going to pick for yes. these next two segments, right? This right. is going to be a surprise to both of us as we're going. So it's not Correct. rehearsed. So just so you know. All right. Yeah. So I agree. Magic Johnson should be the point guard. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a, a, a matchup nightmare, both offensively and defensively, because he's got the length, right? He, he played center, you know, in his rookie year, uh, for Kareem when Kareem got hurt. So he's very versatile. So I, I, I agree with you, Magic. All right. Yeah. Let's go to shooting guard, the top shooting guard of all time. Like, who would you pick out of everybody? So my shooting guard for my team is Steph Curry. Oh! Yes. Oh, what? Yes. That, that surprises me, man. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll, get, I'll get into that, why I pick Steph as we go. Man, dude, you took Homer to a whole new level right there. Well, well yeah. A whole probably, new I, level. I'm sure, everyone on, I'm sure everyone on YouTube land or everywhere else on the podcast are going to be like, this dude's Whoa. a whole he doesn't dude, know what he's talking about. But dude, her, this episode is going to blow up, man, thanks to that <laughs> comment, man. <laughs> well, here's, 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 my, here's my thing, right? All right, let's go. Why did I take Magic? Because he's the best passer. Yes. Why am I taking Steph? Because he's the best shooter. Okay. Right? Okay. He's going right. to open up the court for everybody else on my team. And okay. again, this is what this is kind of what I was alluding to because I figured this is the response I would get. Right. right. Okay. Steph, Understood. Understood. But I'm, I'm, I'm building a team, right? I'm not I'm not saying that Steph is the best two guard that ever existed. I don't I would argue he's not. But in this particular team, that's what I'm building. There's a reason I picked a six nine point guard because on defense, even though he's not a defensive dynamo, I got other jobs for him. Right. All right. right? Okay. 
Come on, man. Dude, the whole NBA world is just shaking right now from that, from that, <laughs> from that, from that, from that pick, You're man. Like, hey, I respect it, man. So I got to tell you, you know who I'm going to pick, man. Come on. I thought you were going to pick Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is the best player of all time from an offensive and defensive standpoint, and he's a shooting guard. Right? So I have, you know, Magic and, and Jordan. You have Magic and Curry. You know, but now, uh, now I'll have you know, I'm, I'm going positionless for the most part. I, I'm not, I hear you, I, yeah. and I'm, I, I have a few of these picks too. Yeah. But it's interesting to see how you make up your team and why. And I'm telling you why I'm making up my team. I'm looking at it from a defensive standpoint always first. You learned yeah. that probably from the first time we did these picks in episode three of Buzzer Beaters. You know why I picked the team that I picked? I'm doing the same thing here, man. I'm looking at it from a defensive standpoint and offense. That's good enough to win at any level, you know, shooting any at any level. Maybe not as efficient as Curry is from a three-point standpoint, I but agree. efficient everywhere else, man. All I right. Agree. So, all right, man. So let's go to the small forward. Who yep. do you pick as your small forward? Well, that's that's where I put Jordan. Right. I put Jordan oh, as oh, a small okay. forward. Interesting. Okay. okay yeah. So you have a six, six, six small forward. Correct. I'm gonna have a smaller team. Okay. But get, now again, we didn't have the, we didn't lay down the ground rules. But I'm we presuming I'm no. presuming no. But I'm presuming we're playing in today's NBA. We're yeah. not playing. I mean, we in, have to. We have yeah. to. We yeah. We have to because it's so. Ball, so right? so I made that presumption. So I'm putting Jordan at the number three. Okay. Right. Okay, I got so. a defensive stopper. I've got. But see, like when I think of Jordan's career, right? John Paxson shoot the open three. Steve, Steve Kerr. Kerr. Shoot, Shoot the yeah. open three. Do who better to have on your hip than Steph Curry for those situations? And All now, right. what, now what are you going to do? Are you going to guard Jordan with double team him and leave Steph alone? Like to me, that on the offensive end, that combo is just deadly. Just the deadly. only yeah, the only challenge I see with Curry is from the defensive side. Correct. You're going to have to scheme to kind of uh, hide his his uh, ineffective his effectiveness on the defensive end. I mean, he can play. He's just not. That's not his skill. That's not. You mean, his talent. You, mean you mean the way Clay's been hiding him for pretty, pretty much, much the whole, Draymond yeah. too, right? You know, it's well, the same thing, man. They scheme to kind of disguise. Jordan, Jordan can do that better than Clay ever could. So. Right, 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 right. All right, so you 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 pick Jordan. Yeah, that was a sneaky pick at small forty six six. Yep. You know who I picked, man. I picked yeah. LeBron James, man. <laughs> LeBron James, the all time leading scorer. For, I, I essentially now have two Magic Johnsons on the same team, big time facilitators. I picked LeBron James because I think, in my opinion, he is the most versatile NBA player we have seen to this day. He can do everything very well. Um, he, you know, defensive wise, he's kind of slid back. But you know, when we're picking these teams, we're not picking the how they are now. We're picking them at their peak, right? Correct. Their best times in their careers. Correct. And LeBron James, you know, to me. He's even better now from a scoring standpoint than he ever has. So if we were to combine the best scoring that he has combined to where he was defensively early in his career, I'm putting that together as this supernova kind of versatile player. That's the reason why I picked LeBron James. I have two facilitators. I, he's a very good defensive player when he puts his mind to it. So I have three long guys, man, that can create problems. That's the reason why I picked those three. Okay, well, so here, here's my – my concern with that, okay. I think LeBron is a lesser of a player when his passing is not highly involved in what he's doing. And I think that any team that is run by Magic Johnson, yeah, you only got one passer on the squad. You got other guys that can pass, but you're only going to have one facilitator. That's the way that I look at it. I hear you. I hear you. But, yeah. but, but the thing and is, so is I, that see, I see a problem with Magic and LeBron being on the same team. It's almost. It's I, almost I see. I see hockey assists. I see hockey assists left and right, man. That's what I see. I see open guys every time, man. That's what I see. You okay. know, because you can't key on one of those guys. You know, to be the passer, you, you can't. I mean, you know, even when, when when Magic Johnson at his at his at his height, you know, he couldn't be stopped. Now yeah. imagine if the defenses try to key on him. Now you have a LeBron James who does the exact same thing. And if yeah. you know, if, if it needs a blow. Crap! I can go ahead and sub sub Magic Johnson and put in LeBron and have a similar player. So yeah. that's the reason why I did it. Okay. So all right. Um, all right, so let's go. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is interesting, man. So power forward. Who you. would you pick? My squad. My squad is small because oh, I picked. Shoot. I picked Kobe. Holy crap! 
Yeah. Man, you are like totally what the copy yeah. at power forward. Well, again, again, we have to understand. I'm not picking positions, right? I'm oh, picking. Oh, oh. I'm picking guys that can play defense, right? In in this yeah. instance, Kobe yeah. and Michael can play vicious defense. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. That's. I mean, you have two of the guys that are considered the highest skilled players of all time Correct. on one team, right? Correct. I get it. I and, get it. And, and so, and again, I have Magic. So Magic six nine six ten. So it isn't like I'm lock, lock, lacking for size. So I've got Kobe because I've got both guys that can play defense, both guys that can play offense, um, and then I've got shooting with Steph and it's passing with Magic. And that's that's the way that I, again, feel free to rip me apart. But that's that's that, my form. Man, dude, I mean, this is you're shaking up the NBA world with this commentary, man. But it's it's sneaky. Uh, I can see what you're doing. You're you're making yeah. a positionless team, correct? Right? Yes. I, I know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so let me. Okay, this begs the question now, man. Do you have who do you have at center? Do you have LeBron James at center, man? No, no, no. There, so you, I, you, wait, 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 wait. You don't have LeBron James on your team at all. No, I do not. What? You please no. explain. Please <laughs> explain why. Well, well, why? Well, you know who my center is? Okay, tell me who your center is, and now I want you to explain why you don't have LeBron. Sure, on your team. sure. So right. my center is Kareem. I have him as my center as well. Okay, so I need okay. I need block. Okay, look. Simply put, I'm building a team. Now okay. we're gonna get into it about LeBron's great this and LeBron's great that and blah blah this and blah blah that. That's fine. I'm not here to argue. But you said it in your earlier. He's my glue guy. He's my versatile yes. guy. Yeah, he's my versatile. He does a lot of things. And, well. and, and again, when you when you when you look at the team that I'm building, every guy that I'm picking is arguably the best at what he does. Magic is arguably the best passer. Steph is arguably the best shooter. Michael Jordan is the best champion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kobe, Kobe has, Kobe has drive like no other. So yeah. I'm putting Kobe on a six ten guy. Kobe's not backing down, right? Kobe's going to do what he needs to do. And then I've got the guy with the most unstoppable low post shot in the history of the NBA. Yep. Right? Okay. So, okay. So, 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 so I'm going to tell you, okay, when I'm building a team, what, what do I need LeBron in that particular instance? What do I need him for? Uh, I, you know, like I said, he does everything well. <laughs> That's why I, got, I picked I, him. I, I got five That's guys. Why I picked him. I've got five guys that do everything LeBron does well better than LeBron. I would say the only, okay, I would say that LeBron's a better passer than Kobe. No, I, no, that, but he's not that, a better passer than Magic. Yeah, but I already have Magic and I have LeBron. So you're 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 you're, you're specializing. You're, you're you're putting specialists, right? Well, not only am I putting specialists, but I'm building a team. So so number one, look, Magic doesn't look for his shots. Okay, yeah. Steph, he's played with Durant. He's played with you know with Clay. Clay. He knows he knows how to take a back seat. There's going to be the only ego concern I have on my team is going to be with my other three guys, with Jordan, Kobe, and and Kareem. I got a potential issue there. But if we're moving and we're passing, I mean, Kareem played in the Lakers showtime. You know he can run. You know he can do what he needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. He blocked. So what, what I'm saying is people are going to look at this like I left LeBron on. But when I'm looking at my team, I'm asking you, who, uh, would, I, who, who, who would I put LeBron in for that would do a better job than the guy that I'm taking out? Okay. That – I'm just I'm just perplexed, man. That you know the guy that 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 is widely considered in the argument, along with Michael Jordan, as being the greatest of all time, and you don't have him on your top five. Well, I'm like, first what? Of all, first of all, that's 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 fine. I mean, we can okay. again. I'm I'm building a team. Yeah. Right. I'm building yeah. a team, and, and and to me, I mean, we can get into this. Please. Oh, sure. So let, 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 okay, so. LeBron's the greatest of all times, okay? Consider, but LeBron, LeBron, hasn't, LeBron hasn't made things work with teams he's built. LeBron has left teams. He left his hometown team twice. He couldn't, okay. he couldn't get along with the management staff in Miami. You know, uh, he's over at the Lakers, got rid of more talent than I think he took in. Playing okay. GM. Okay, yeah, so what GM. I'm saying is, I, now I know this, this conversation doesn't really have anything to do with his basketball skill. But yes. I'm thinking, imagine a guy like that and what his ego is going to do to a team of four other st studs. Right. Right? So to right. me, I look at this and, like, I'm going, all right, Steph, he'll be low-key. Magic is going to pass. 
you know, Kareem's going to do the big work. He's going to get the rebound, play defense, get his unstoppable shot. My only issue is Jordan and Kobe. And, and then there, I think we got a little bit of alpha alpha that pushes each other. But LeBron is going to come in and be like, oh, you got to go there. You got to do and his whole vibe. is So I, I don't I don't subscribe to his so, greatness. He, OK, so, OK, so you're saying that his persona would get in the way of the team. I, 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 I'm saying that's one aspect. Also, historically okay. speaking, look at his actions. Look at what he's done. Right. I mean, just just look at it. I mean, when, when he did, you know, the announcement of going to Miami, you know, he embarrassed his hometown team. Yeah. I love the chance that the Akron, that there was an Akron, hey, yes. they started calling him Scotty, Pippen. Exactly. That was awesome. Yeah, exactly. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Then, yeah. He goes, yeah. then he goes to Miami where arguably you've got the best coach and GM in the yeah. NBA. Right. Arguably. Yeah. And he can't, he can't manage to stay there. Why? Because he's trying to tell them what to do, and Riley's, like, not having it. Like, you got to go, bro. Like, you're not telling me what to do. And and so what I'm saying is, now, this is all external stuff, but all of this plays into... Why you didn't pick him on your team. Yeah, why I didn't pick him on a team. I'm building a squad that needs to get along. And I didn't even consider any... Yeah, I didn't even consider any of these factors. You were taking it to another level. Yeah. You know, that the, 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 you know, the dynamics of a team and how the team can function well together and the personalities matter, right? So Correct. So you're, you're saying that someone like LeBron because of his history and what he's done in his time in the NBA in disrupting teams to get the way he wants the team to be built and will do it at any cost has created problems for that team wherever he goes and whenever he leaves it. Exactly. I mean, you look at today, right? He's leveraging every bit of power he has to get Bronny on an NBA team. If Bronny, if Bronny's last name wasn't James, dude, he wouldn't even be at the freaking combine. I mean, come on. Wow. Come wow. On. Tuan, dude, we're, dude, this is this is gonna blow up, man. I'm just telling you, bro. Like, 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 look at him, you know? Wow. They're saying he's 6'4. They measured him, he's barely over 6'1. You know, wow. he doesn't, and so what I'm saying is you look at that personality tree. You know, yeah. LeBron, LeBron is a master. If you ask me what LeBron's greatest skill is, it's passing. LeBron's greatest skill is enhancing and protecting his brand. Whoa, whoa. That's Hello. his greatest skill. All That's right, all skill. right. Man, he's, 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 he's taking he's, preaching, he's, man. He's, woo! He's, he's taking care of himself so he can That's, play for 20 plus years. Right. You know, he's yeah. leveraged he's leveraged every bit of power that he can to hold organizations hostage to make sure that they do what he wants to do. And even when they do, they end up more than not not being successful. Wow. Wow. Hey, man, I did not see this one coming, man. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I seriously was just looking at it from a pure basketball, you know, uh, uh, the way they play together, the chemistry. But you're taking it to a whole nother well, level. That's what I'm respect. saying is I'm, yeah. you said I'm building a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I get a it, team. Man. I get right? it. I'm not, just, get I'm, not, it. I'm, not, I'm not just putting the five. And, you know, I struggled with Kobe to put him in because, you know, I could have put Tim Duncan. I could have yes. put – Larry Bird. I could have yes. put somebody that fit the mold more. But yes. here's the thing, right? And I and I don't know how to play this off of kind of what we're doing. But Kobe idolizes Jordan, so the yes. presumption would be that he would still idolize Jordan in this yes. scenario, yes. right? That would, yes. So so he's not going to challenge Jordan to no. the nth degree. He'll challenge no. him to a limit, yes. but ultimately he'll defer to whatever Michael wants. And you say so, that LeBron would probably challenge Jordan well, in this scenario. He would. I don't see. That's the thing about LeBron. I don't know if he'd outright challenge him, but he'd do it in a way that breaks team chemistry. Like he, okay. he he'd like go around him and say this or say that. Like like just stuff that gets people upset. You know, like why is this dude saying this? Why did he say it to my face? Type of situation. Right, right. You know, right, I, right. I just I'm, I don't want to. I don't obviously I don't know LeBron at all. But you I'm saying, know, but, but hey, these are all the points you're I not, get from him. You're not. I mean, you're bringing up points that are considered factual in in how things were handled but yeah you know but 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 you know there's there's always nuances to all this stuff but i can see why your argument is there there it's 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 valid is i'll tell you all the lebron lovers out there are gonna be hating man but oh i know i know a great, day. It's a great take it's a great great take though tuan i gotta tell you man i did not see, I, I mean did, i'll I just i'll that. just i'll ask you this eddie i'll ask yeah. you this okay okay knowing what you know you're an owner Matt. yes yes i make you an owner Knowing what you know about what LeBron has done. Yes. And let's say you pick whatever, your six guys. Would you draft LeBron over those guys? Uh, 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 over the guys that you have on your team right now? 
Sure. Or, or, or what I'm saying is like the way I looked at this is like LeBron's got no – now loyalty is a strong word because it goes both ways and we can get into it. But LeBron's left organizations in the dust. He's told organizations what to do and not allowed certain people in the organization to do their job. What I'm saying is if you know all of these things, why in God's name would you pick him as your corner? Okay, so you're like, if you, knowing, like, like, like knowing what you know about his game and his legacy and how, how things – kind of worked yeah. out in, in how yeah. he built the teams and kind of the way he left Cleveland and then and, and had this show, you know, uh, the decision and, you know, creating, you know, a, a total scene about, you know, where exactly. where he's going, right? And then, I mean, do you, you know, think, break- do you think, do you think the owner of Cleveland likes LeBron? Do you think no. Pat Riley likes LeBron? Respects him, likes him, probably oh, yeah, not. No, no. Respects, respects him, him, yes. Of course. I respect, lot, everybody I respect everybody respects LeBron, his game. I'm because saying, he's a, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying he's a yeah. stiff. Yeah. But what yeah. I'm saying is when we're talking about the nuance of greatness, yeah. like there's a lot of these things that matter, you know? I hear you. I hear like, you. Like, like, do I think that Steph is more talented than LeBron? No. no. But I know that when, when the Warriors got Durant, Steph bowed out. He said, yeah. do what you got to do. Steph yeah. showed the wherewithal t- to say, hey, in order for this to work, one of us is going to have to be not the alpha, you know? And, and so to me, I'm looking at that and I, I look at magic and I, you know, magic in his happy go lucky way. Now Mal- magic's alpha, but he's, he kills you with kindness and kills you with a smile. And, and so those two guys at, at the, whatever, if you want to call them the one, two, you know, those are guys that aren't going to ego trip, you know, my only ego trips are probably Jordan and Kareem, you know, and them figuring out what's what, but you know, Kareem played with worthy Kareem played with magic, who was a large presence. He, he proved that he could do it, but who? You know, LeBron played with Kyrie, probably the guard with the best handles in the league. Yes. And what Kyrie went running, like he got shot out of a cannon. I agree. Damn. Yeah, Pippen Pip, Pip, Pip never leave the Bulls? You know? Yeah. Like, like, that's what I'm saying. I look at this and I'm going, dude, your behavior, is, is that in a way where you make your team feel a certain kind of way? I hear you, man. I hear you. Man, dude, I mean... Dude, okay, so to, to summarize real quick, right? <laughs> so you have Magic as your point guard. I cool. have Magic as my point guard. You have Steph Curry. I have Michael Jordan. You have uh, cool. Kobe. Wait, you didn't have Kobe Bryant. You had uh, – Interchangeable. Uh, you can put Kobe at three, Jordan at four, however you, you want put, to do you it. Put, yeah, you put Jordan, Jordan at three. Yeah, put Jordan at three. I have LeBron James at three. You pick Kobe at four, and I haven't revealed who my fourth no, was. No, you haven't. So my fourth – is Olajuwon, man. Yes. All right. I had to pick my favorite player I, I hear of all you. time I on I my team. With that, Eddie. I, I had with to put him on there, man, because he is easily considered, in my opinion, at his position, the best two-way center we have seen. I um, I, I struggle with that. So that's with the you. reason why I put him there, man. And because you know, the, then you have Kareem as the five. We both have Kareem as our five. Yeah. You know, because he has the most unstoppable shot, and he's. Still a sneaky good passer, a sneaky good uh, 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 a rebounder, you yep. know, and, and and he did everything sneakily well. I mean, right? But his his go to shot never been stopped. And I'm and I'm keeping the guy who blocked his shot, Hakeem Olajuwon, on the same team, and so he doesn't cause a problem for him. So yep. that's the reason why I have Hakeem as my four. So no, that, that's a good. I'm I'm jealous of that pick, and I I struggled with with Olajuwon and whether to put him in instead of Kobe. Right. I right. struggle. I, I did struggle with that, but I thought, you know, I wanted a team that could run. And I thought two big men, even though Akeem can run, I thought that Kobe made us more versatile in that sense. And in this day and age, whatever team we're playing, for me to have two bigs that can't really guard the three was too much of a liability. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, and just so you know, I was in between Elijah Wan and Tim Duncan. That's yeah. where I was in between. So, yeah. I, but I put, I had to pick my, my favorite player of well, all time. Tim Duncan, Tim Duncan and Elijah Wan will pop out on my next list. All right, man. Yeah. So I think, hey, we, we, we put some good time on this <laughs> segment, man. Uh, yeah. And you had some great takes. I did not see that one coming, man. I got to tell you, the NBA world is going to blow up when they do this, man. <laughs> well, so let the hatred good. come. I know the youth loves their cells, some, some LeBron James, and, and I'm not, I'm not doubting his skill, but I'm looking at this. I look at greatness in a lot of different ways. I hear you, man. You know, I hear you. I you hear know? you. So, like, like yeah, one man. of the reasons, like one of the reasons, I think that Jordan continuously, even though I've argued that Kareem should be considered as the greatest of all time, 
I think the reason that Jordan is because Kareem was a curmudgeon to the media. And so the media is responsible. And so whether that's fair or not, that's an aspect of how your greatness is calculated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and so, and so those things, I have to look at them. I have to kind of calculate them and see where they come. And to me, LeBron has always been about LeBron. Interesting, man. Interesting. Right yeah. on, man. Yeah. Well, hey, man, uh, we have essentially, I mean, we're going to go a little bit over time, folks. We're essentially right at it, uh, about five minutes left and for an hour, for an hour. So we're probably going to spend about 15 minutes. We're going to spend this one. Uh, fit, this is going to be our last segment. We'll go yeah. ahead and finish we'll up. The next you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll add next week's segment uh, uh, into next, uh, the last segment to next week's. Uh, yeah, the uh, large markets we'll do next week. The large market we'll do next week. So yeah. go ahead and let's, let's talk about the. Uh, the, all, what you wanted to talk about, man. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about underrated players, um, you know, throughout the history. You know, now, of course, uh, my view is slanted towards my generation and the players I grew up watching and even some of today's players. But I wanted to talk a little bit about underrated players because I think just like I mentioned, um, and this kind of fed into my large market. I won't get into it, but where a player played, you know, how many championships they won, you know, that all kind of elevates them into their greatness. And I think there's right. a handful of players that that because of their market, because of their demeanor, because of the way they are, they're, they're underrated. I think they're just yeah. Yeah. very underrated. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to go uh, kind of maybe pick five players. I think I ended up picking like seven because I, I struggled with it a little bit. But right. I wanted to kind of go back and forth with you, Eddie, and, and talk about some of these players uh, in terms of like what your top five most underrated players are, what my top five most underrated players are. So I kind of wanted to start with you and yeah, take so, one. And yeah, don't go ahead and order. Yeah, so I'll tell you what. What? What? what let's. Uh, do you have it positionless or do you have it by position? No, so I, I, have, did, it, I, I did, have it positionless. I didn't. I didn't go with position because I just went for different okay. reasons. So I've got. Okay. I've got a couple of players that are underrated because of one thing versus underrated because okay. of another thing, that, that type of. Okay. So it's good. We did, we did a little different. So I went th- with the same theme as we did in the last segment where we picked the, the, the point guard shooting okay. guard. I did it that way. Right. Okay. So okay. what I'm, what I'm going to uh, do is uh, I think, I think I may be able to get that out of you. Okay. Out of so let me, let, let me go ahead and tell you rather than like the last segment where I picked my point guard, then you pick, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you my whole team. And then you okay. tell me your old, your old team after that. But okay. the difference here is what I'm going to do is rather than revealing who I picked, I'm going to give you some of their accolades to see if you can guess who that player is. All right. All right. All right. All right. So at point guard, and by the way, the criteria that I chose here, there these are these are players that are underrated when compared against like players at that same position that okay. are probably considered better than them. But their stats are very similar, okay. and maybe the market that they played for had an influence. All right, okay. but okay. but but some of these players that I'm picking, a lot of them are Hall of Famers. Actually, all of them are Hall of Famers. So that's yeah, kind of, I have some that thing. are not. I, say it again. I have some that are not Hall of okay. Famers. Okay, so I, I, well, I I'll I, tell I, you what. When you give when I if when I take a guess at yours, I'll just give you mine. Okay, that's I, don't, cool. I don't have the accolades, the background, that, that type of stuff. Yeah, so I'm I, I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's just do that. So so okay. The point guard. I think you're going to get this one, man. So this guy played 19 seasons for the same team. And believe it or not, this guy played 17 seasons every freaking game, man. Can you believe that? Yeah. Nobody nobody in this freaking era is doing yeah. that. We're all talking about, like, load management times right now. Th- yeah. This player did not do that, right? This yeah. guy's a 10-time All-Star. Led the league in assists for nine straight seasons. Uh, okay. I you know you. who I'm talking about, right? Yes, I do. NBA record of 15,806 assists and 3,256 steals. Leaders in both of those categories. Gold medal, gold medal winner in 1992 and in 1996. So he was on the original Dream Team. And you know how they dominated, right? So this yep. guy is a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, he liked to deliver the mail to a certain mailman. Exactly. Yes. Gonzaga's finest, John Stockton. Yes. Honestly, he's probably, in my opinion, the most underrated player of all time. Honestly, to me. Okay. Because 
Do you ever watch that Dream Team documentary when when they were kind of going through all you know uh, you know how all the practices, kind of behind the scenes conversations? That even you know when the practice when between Kobe and Jordan, you know they were kind of competing against each other and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, I just said yeah. Uh, no, no, it was not. It was not Kobe. It was Magic in 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 in, in Jordan. So, um, but anyway, uh, 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 John Stockton was the guy that was walking around town. And nobody knew the hell nobody he was. Nobody knew who he was. I remember that. Nobody remember that knew thing. who he was. And he was yeah. wearing the Dream Team shirt, yep. you know? And then, you know, he was kind of like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm part of the Dream Team. I'm this guy. And nobody freaking recognized him. It was all about Charles Barkley and Jordan. I mean, those guys took the show, right? John Stockton, to me, is the most underrated player of all time, the most underappreciated player of all time. I, only the people that played with him understand how good that guy was. Yeah. But the, the new school right now, They'll look him up and like, oh, come on, this little white guy from Gonzaga, come on. No, that dude was a beast, man. He could he's shoot. A, he's he the could... Greg Maddox of uh, the NBA, bro. Yeah, man, he was unbelievable, man. He yeah. was a scrappy player too, man. So that's why I picked, right? So that's so, so when you say so when you say underrated in this context, yes, you're, you're saying in terms of the youth today, in terms of recognition. No, I, I'm of... saying I'm just saying you know, when you compare like other people at that position. There's other names that kind of stick out for a lot of people, right? You know, yeah. uh, as far as the best point guards of all time, they'll they'll mention like you know Magic. They'll make, they'll mention Jason Kidd. They'll make uh, they'll mention like uh, Steph Curry. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Gail Goodrich, whoever, right? All these uh, all these other players, you know, that are at the same position. But a lot of people forget about John Stockton. How good that guy was. That's no, why I, 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 I I agree. I agree. He. All right. He is arguably the second best point guard in this in the history of the NBA. Okay, behind Magic, you yeah. could argue that he is. I, right. I agree. All right, so let me go ahead. So let me go ahead and give you my next guy, uh, shooting guard. Okay, this guy was Rookie of the Year in 1989. He was a fifth overall pick, six-time All Star, three-time All NBA Second Team. He's considered one of the best shooters in NBA history, as well as one of the best defenders at his position. He is a Hall of Famer, and this is where I think you're going to know who he is. Widely known, oh, as, the is one, widely known yeah. as the one defender that Jordan just hated going up yep. against. I know. The matchups. The Rock, the Rock, the Rock. The, the Rock. rock. <laughs> exactly. The second yes. member of the infamous Run TMC. No, not Run TMP. Yes. Run TMC, TMC, the original, That's right? right. Yep. Mitch Richmond. Of the Kansas State, of Kansas State, right? He was the fifth overall pick by the Golden State Warriors. He only played for two seasons for the Warriors, and yet he's legendary in the lore of Golden State Warriors history. Uh, he is considered just that guy, man. That, and he still he only played for two seasons, and and people just adore him here, right? Oh, and he that was so mad. We, we, Billy yeah. Owens, I hate you wherever you are out there. You took my Mitch Richmond away. <laughs> and you know what? And, and you know this is this is considered you know Don Nelson's greatest regret. That's he, yeah. he said. This is one of his greatest regrets that he got rid of Mitch Richmond. Right. And right. we all know why, right? He became a Hall of Famer elsewhere, had the best years over at uh, Sacramento Kings. Um, but uh, at least he didn't go too far from Golden State. So he No, but I, by the way, I had him on my list as well. All right, cool. All right. So, all right. So the, num uh, uh, the, the, salt, the small forward, I don't know if you're going to get this one, but let's, I think if I describe it in a way that you'll get it, I'm going to try and see if I can get away with it without telling you until the very end. Okay. This guy was considered a serious scoring machine, like probably the original scoring machine, honestly. Uh, he was drafted by the New, New Jersey Nets in 1978 and was uh, considered the 10th leading scorer in his rookie season in 1978. He was a resilient player, uh, mainly because early in his career he had battled with substance abuse, um, and he also actually had an ACL injury when he played uh, for the the, the, the the third team that he left, you know, because he played for, he got drafted by the Nets, then he went to the Utah Jazz, and then he went to this third team, and then after that third team, he went to this other team, and that's where he had this ACL injury, but that's where he's widely known as mm -hmm. the best player because of that team that he played for. I think for. I got gotcha. you. I he, think he I got gotcha. you. And then, you know, once he, he recovered from his injury, from his knee, uh, he came back as a Washington Bullet and actually became the third leading scorer, uh, you know, at, at 28.4 points per game uh and he was third behind jordan i forgot who the second guy was four time four time all-star two-time nba first team scoring champion in 1985 he was also the nba comeback player of the year in 1980 in 1981 when he was dealt to who is it he was dealt to the, not the warriors yes he was dealt oh. to the warriors from utah 
Do you know who this oh, player no, is? Oh, no, I thought, man, okay. Uh, I thought you were talking about Bernard King. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah, so Bernard he, King. Yeah, Bernard he took King. the Warriors, then went to the Knicks. He went from, yeah, but he was dealt from the Utah Jazz to, yes. the, to, the, to the Warriors, and then from yes. the Warriors he went to the Knicks, and they, they dealt – him to the Knicks for Michael Ray Richardson and a draft pick. Yes, Michael That's Ray Richardson. That's where they got in return for Bernard yeah. King. Yeah, and then Bernard, Bernard King. King became this unbelievable Dude. scorer in New York, man. So well, that, that that was my – that was a soapbox moment. That was the first time where I experienced the East Coast media bias because I love Bernard King as a warrior. Oh, dude, I love him. I thought he was fantastic. Unbelievable. And when, and when he went, this happened twice to my Warriors. It happened with Bernard King, and it happened with Tim Hardaway. Mitch, oh, Tim Hardaway and Mitch. Yeah, the minute the minute they went to the East, yes, oh, all the, the East, yeah, all the media acted I, as if I, as I, if they discovered these two guys. Yes, and I'm like, no, bro, these guys were freaking balling long before you yes. guys found them. Yes, and this is where yeah, this is where I'm like the the, the bias is real. Because I know who the hell Bernard King is, and I lo- I love Bernard King. That dude was a gamer. He I think was he had unbelievable. Like, yeah, I mean he's he he's a he's a Knicks legend. You know? He is. Yeah, like, he was he was doing that with the Warriors, but he only yeah, played with the was. Warriors for two years. Yeah, I know. That's I know. again. So I picked two guys back to back that played for the Warriors for two years, and yet they're still regarded in the lore of the Warriors, right? Correct. And it shows you how crappy the franchise the Warriors were prior to this current yep. dynasty yep. because we held on to players that only played for us for two years. Exactly. But anyway, I digress. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so so let's go to uh, – so point the, the power forward. Um, yes. So here – this one th- – dude, when I looked at this guy's stats, I'm surprised this guy's underrated. Un- unbelievable. He's already been mentioned in the previous segment, uh, but wasn't on the list, but someone that we should have put on the list, right? Yeah. That already gives you who it is. All yeah. right. He was the number one pick in 1997 draft. He's a two-time league MVP, three times, uh, three-time finals MVP, 10-time NBA All-Star, five times NBA champion. You already know who this is. Oh, this I know point, who this right? is. 19-year NBA career. And believe it or not, this guy – didn't pick up a basketball until he was 14 years old. He was actually training to be an Olympic swimmer in the Olympics. He yep. actually came from the Virgin Islands. I misspoke. I thought he came from the Bahamas. I knew it was some kind of tropic area when we in a past podcast. I mentioned he came from the Bahamas. He actually came from the Virgin Islands. This guy is the big fundamental. The and big that's fundamental, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. That, yep. and he's underrated, man. Yep. I mean, when I, I have him on my too. I have Tim Duncan. I on was my like, list. oh my God, how is this guy underrated? Because a lot of people think about Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, right? Uh, you take a name. Those guys are typically the guys that kind of stand out as a as a best power fours, usually for a lot of people, right? Yep. But this guy, I mean, I looked at his stats and I looked at all his accolades. I'm like, oh my God, this guy was a beast. And, you know, I got to tell you, man, when I watched him growing up, I, I wasn't really like impressed by him. Because he's just so slow moving. He had that bank shot, right? And I'm like, what's the big deal about this guy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was a big deal after you look back at him, you know, kind of the same way I looked at Larry Bird. You know, I thought, what's the big deal about this guy? But then after yeah. I look back, holy crap, these guys were hella good. So you they can't anyway, stop him. That's the big deal. That is the big deal. So yeah. Tim Duncan, the big fundamental, is my power forward. And then my I last got, guy, because I, I know we gotta get you, we gotta get to your list, man. So um so we definitely are way over time on this one. But anyway, we're bringing a good content on it. So we appreciate it. All good. So, all right, the center. Here we go. Here's the center. Drafted in 1987. He was a league MVP uh, one year. He is a 10-time All-Star, a two-time NBA champion, also part of the original Dream Team. Okay? He was a scoring champion in 1994 when he scores 71 points in the final game to edge out Shaq. He's one of only one of four players to have a quadruple double in his career. Do you know what I'm talking about? Robinson. David Robinson, the Admiral. And you know what's the interesting Admiral. about this guy, man? He was drafted in 1987, and then they sat on him for two years because he had to go serve for the Navy for two years. So then he came in the league two years after he got drafted and then was Rookie of the Year, you know? And, uh, dude, he was a, I mean, he's another guy that I look back and I'm like, holy crap, this guy was hella good. But because I, you know, I, there's something to be said about the small market thing. And that's something that unfortunately we're not going to get to for yeah. the next, the next segment. Cause it, it feeds right of, into it. This feeds, feeds right, right into it. it. So for those of you out there 
you know, uh, just be patient. We're going to talk about this, but it dovetails right into what, you know, Tuan wanted to talk about. We're going to talk about that, and I'll summarize, you know, what we'll we're talking about. Well, imagine if Robinson and Duncan played for the Knicks. I know. I Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we talk about overrated, and I don't want to piss off my Knicks fans out there. Right. But, you know, they, they had Ewing, which I thought was severely overrated. Yeah. And, I and, and they, they he, you couldn't stop hearing about Ewing. Yeah, you know, and, and so they, they hype up their players, there. man. Yeah, they hype up their players, man. We know they the media do. out there, man. They we know do. the media. Yeah, no, it's right. so, of a large market. Right, right. Yes. So, so anyway, that's my list, man. So, I, I, it's it, to, to, in summary, it's John Stockton, Mitch Richmond, Bernard King, Tim Duncan, and David Robinson as my all-time underrated five uh, of all time. So, tell me your list, man. Sure. So my my list. So you went, you went with accolades. Yes. I went. I went with kind of cult favorites okay. people players that maybe time has forgotten but players yeah. that man are tattooed on my brain for one reason or another so the first guy and again I'm, I'm gonna skip over the players because i had tim duncan on mine i had mitch richmond on mine so i'm gonna leave those two alone uh the first guy man i thought he was flashy i never watched pistol pete maravich play um but I can imagine that it was like this guy, and that's a uh, white chocolate, Jason Williams. Oh, yeah. Dude, I love yeah. that dude. I don't know like how much he's one of those guys that when hey, if you're young, if you're under 25, jump on YouTube, go watch his highlights. Oh man, he's incredible. He's dude, there's incredible. no one in the NBA. Jason Williams, yeah, Jason yes, Williams, white Jason chocolate. Williams. Yep. There's no one in the NBA today that does what that guy did. That no. dude was incredible. And so for that simple sense, just from the excitement factor, the way that he, you know, we were talking about passing earlier. And, you know, one of the reasons that I liked Magic is Magic not only was a great passer, but he passed you open. He, he put you in positions where passes weren't there. You know, like, and that's the, to me, that was the biggest difference between Stockton and Magic was Stockton did the correct pass every time. But, but there were, it was a fundamental play. Magic took risks. You know, he kind of led you a little bit. He's looking right. to the left and throwing to the right, you know. And, and so he's doing – and Jason Williams was in that mold. That guy, I mean, I remember he'd do these, this behind the back where he hit it with his opposite elbow. With his elbow, and, yeah. And then that, that was an all-star game. He was, he was passing it to Rafe LaFrance of the Denver Nuggets. And he Correct. Didn't, he, and he didn't dunk it. Friends. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. didn't dunk it, man. He got fouled and he couldn't dunk it, man. That was such an awesome freaking play. Yeah. yeah. Look, look it up, up, guys. You too. Yeah, look, look it up. Look, look it up. So yeah. the next two are two, what I would call, I don't want to say warrior killers, but these are two guys that every time we had to face them, I would get nervous because if the if the clock was coming down, these guys always killed us. And these were two guards, and that is Sam Cassell and, oh, Rod, yeah. and, Rod, Strickland, and Rod Strickland. Oh, dude, that Both guy was unbelievable. You know, before Rod Strickland, I mean, before Kyrie Irving, there was Rod Strickland. Yes. Rod Strickland was, to me, the, considered the best finisher of, of all time to me until yep. Kyrie Irving showed up. Yeah. No, Rod Strickland was a fantastic point guard. I mean, yes. he could score. He could pass. He could – you're right. He was Kyrie before Kyrie. He had yes. some He had some injury. I believe he had a little bit of passion with the Puff Puff, which was a kind of uh, <laughs> frowned upon back in yeah. those days, right? Yeah, it wasn't yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. as hunky-dory as it is today. So he was kind of like on the outs. And he played primarily his career in Portland, which, again, small market team, right? Um, so those are those are two guards. All right. Um, I had um, Akeem Olajuwon. Um, I, I think I don't want to get into that, but I think Akeem Olajuwon is severely underrated. I mean, I think if I had to rate best centers of all time, I mean, it's Kareem one and Olajuwon one A. I mean, it's that it's that close in my mind. I think Akeem was just a fantastic player. Speaking, you know, talking about Tim Duncan not playing basketball till later in your career, you know, Akeem was another one. He was a huge right. soccer, he played player. soccer player. He's a soccer yep. player. He's a goalie. Had, he had yeah. magical feet, bro. That dude had incredible feet. I still remember when um, Shaq, his rookie year with Orlando, they went to the finals. Yep. And then, again, folks, if you want to see Shaq get embarrassed, yep. bring up those finals. Because Olajuwon, the dream shake, Shaq had no shot. Had no shot. And, I mean, <laughs> Olajuwon is, should be referred to as, I think, easily in the top ten. I think we could argue in the top five greatest of all time. I think a yeah, lot I mean, of that great. 
there, there's nobody else that could replicate his footwork um, in the NBA. I mean, there's a reason why he's hired by a lot of NBA teams to be a consultant to their big men to try and get them to kind of learn some of those those moves, right? I would say the closest guy to him from a down low post move, kind of like you don't know what he's doing, was remember Kevin McHale? Kevin McHale, Kevin McHale was the yeah. exact same way, man, but yeah. he did it differently. He did it way okay. differently. Like he did a lot of pivoting. He did it, he did it in a small spot. Yeah, but he did a lot of pivoting. You know, know this kind of fake pivot, pivot, you know. Yeah. Whereas, uh, you know, Elijah did this kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't know what he did, man. He was just yeah. like shaking, shaking, and he got he left people in the dust, man. But yeah, that dude, good pick, man, because he is yeah. underrated. He is a Hall of Famer, but he's underrated uh, for in a lot of people. I'd mind. be I'd be curious what Elijah Wan could do in today's game because I think he had a pretty decent jump shot. It wasn't. I mean, he didn't have range, but I think he could definitely have been a player that could impact today's game. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. All right. Yeah. And then my last guy, three-time MVP, um, was known for missing hoops on purpose so he can get his own rebound and then score it again. Moses Malone. That's right. Moses yeah. Malone. Yep. Moses Malone. Yep. Yes. Yep. And I yep. have him because no one ever talks about Moses. You know, and I think he might have been the very first – Guy, you know, I might be mis misspeaking here, but I, he's the first guy I remember that came out of high school. Um, I believe you're correct. Yeah, he's the, oh yeah, he's the first guy that well, I remember that it? came out yeah. of high school. Yeah, yeah I thought it was Daryl. Right I thought league. it was Daryl Dawkins, but you might be right. No, 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 no. Moses Malone came right out of high school, man. Yeah. I remember he was one of the first guys, if not the first. Yep, so, and that dude, he was good when he was young, and when he got older, dude, he was like a wooden cement, like a cement block. You couldn't move. <laughs> like that dude was just boom, stationed yeah. there, get his rebounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Miss two, get two rebounds, score a basket. That right dude was, was a beast. So I, I love I love Moses Malone. I mean, for those of you that don't know, you know, obviously the Warriors have always been my team, but my my love team was the 76ers back in the day. Dr. J, Maurice Cheeks, Andrew Tony, Mike Ivoroni, Bobby Jones, Moses Malone, Daryl Dawkins, Bobby Jones. Yeah, I yeah. loved, I love that team. Yeah, I love scrappy, that team. Man. Yeah, and wherever totally I could scrappy. watch them, you know, uh, I would. I, you know, and and uh, we we had I, Eddie and I had a conversation earlier about whether or not Dr. J was overrated, and he probably was a little bit, you know, given kind of today's athlete and what they can do. But when I was six years old, I mean, I was going to be six, 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 seven. I was going to be Dr. J's. <laughs> I was going to mimic Dr. J. That's what I. That's what I wanted, you know. And and right. obviously it didn't come to fruition because I'm nowhere near six, six, but. <laughs> but I love Dr. J and I love those teams. And Moses, I just remember he was the anchor of that squad. And, uh, you know, yeah. low post galore. Right something on. something that, you know, I think for us old heads, some things we lost when the three-point line was uh, introduced. Yeah. You know? Some of that, some of that skill set, some of that low post skills. Yep. Yeah. Hey, but yeah. that's you know, Jokic just brought that back a little bit too. You know, a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. They're more like a hybrid now, where they they have to play out, but they can play yeah. out. But yeah, yeah, exactly, I'm exactly. I'm yeah. Right on, bro. Hey, man. Well, hey, man. This was a really good uh, show, man. We covered. We intended to cover four topics, uh, but we, you know, we don't like to kind of go too. Over time, right now we're almost twenty minutes <laughs> over time. Uh, yeah. Right now we're at seventeen minutes over. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, so we talked about the NBA playoffs, and then we talked about our all-time starting five. You got to <laughs> listen, man. Tuan has some takes that are just going to take the NBA. Up the Dude, I wouldn't be surprised if Stephen A. Smith starts talking about you tomorrow, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the same in the same spirit, uh, the talk as long as it is a Shannon Sharp, as long yeah, as yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Shay Shay, Club Shay Shay, yeah, Shay. he's like, yeah, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so in the same, in the third time we talked about was in the same spirit of the all time starting five, the 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 most underrated t uh, five players or, or a group of players that we see in all time. So we both went through our lists. I went through differently than Tuan, but Tuan gave us a list. A lot of them were similar, but do we tend to like to talk about the large market uh, 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 if it's an inherent advantage for winning championships? We're going to yeah. talk about that next week, yeah, man. So we tune in for next week. Again, uh, guys, uh, episode seven of Buzzer Beaters. You can find Buzzer Beaters at gremlinsmedia.com, Rumble, YouTube, under the profile Gremlins Media, as well as your traditional podcast outlets such as Spotify, Google, Apple, and Pandora. And you can also find us on Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter. Tuan, another great show, brother. Uh, I'll be listening to, uh, you know, first take tomorrow morning to see if I can go. This guy, this idiot. <laughs> who is, who are these this? buzzer beater guys, man? Just like <laughs> raining on Glaude. James is playing, We need Tuan off of YouTube. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Yeah, it's all right, man. All right. It off. It's all right. I can take it. But just <laughs> listen to what I said, you know. I hear you, man. If you're, if you're an owner and you're starting a franchise, is LeBron really the guy you're going to go with? Oh, man. Great yeah. take, man. Think about that. Think about that. All right, brothers. All right, guys. Until next week, this is Buzzer Beater signing off. Hey everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.